and the sales are up happy days <laughs> but um, Beverly's hoisted the sail all the way to the top uh, and I have at last remembered to put our redo our marks on our halyard um, which um, gives the person in the uh, who's hoisting it um, tells them that the sail is all the way up I've just done it now. Added some marks, something not bad. Yes, but isn't it nice to have the sail up? You know I love sailing. Why do you think we bought a sailboat? Well, I'm talking to you now because I want to put in a little bit more of a fair representation of the, what it's like being on a sailboat. Um, at the bottom of the gear we put the sails up and we were both very excited and we were like yay we're sailing happy days and it wasn't very very many miles before the winds completely disappeared so the sails have had to go away <laughs> now we don't normally do this but Beverly decided that she would try dropping the sail downwind. Well, all I can say, that was a complete disaster. It really did not work. We had ropes everywhere and um, we will not be doing that again. But uh, no, it's just sometimes you go out, you're obviously looking at uh, predictions, things like that. At the moment, Beverly is contemplating making weather dice. <laughs> Getting an eight-sided dice and putting north, west, south and east, north, west, south, east, etc. <laughs> and using that to predict the weather. Because it's supposed to be coming from um, the northwest. We've got it from the northeast. <laughs> so you know, Beverly thinks her weather predicting dice would work better.
Glen Arm. Uh, we made it in last night when it was quite dark. Uh, our biggest problem is actually trying to find the fish farm, which is just outside the marina entrance. Um, there were some boys marking the passage. There's a red flashing buoy to the north, and we came inside between it and the land, and then went directly for the marina entrance. But we could not for the life of us see the, uh, the fish farm anywhere. There was no warning lights on the farm itself, just a couple of lights to mark the general area in which the farm can be found. And they do move it around from time to time, so <laughs> it was a bit nerve-wracking. Well, we made it in, we've had a bit of a break, and we hope to complete our passage down to Larn Lock in, well, a few minutes really. We'll be getting the boat prepped, and then we'll be going off. Yeah, I've been cooking underway. This is a gammon surprise. <laughs> because frankly, I haven't got a clue what it's going to taste like. Well, it'll be delicious. It's got Beverly's Bevel a great cook. It's got gammon, it's got chorizo, it's got onions, it's got potatoes, mu uh, mushrooms, and a bit of garlic. Ugh. God only knows. Back in the Secret Anchorage. We've been here for um, a couple of days, came down from Glen Arm and we've had a lovely time. Uh, we got a very very good night's sleep, it was like the boat was up in stands, it was so steady and um, we also got some shopping down at Asda, uh, down in behind the roundabouts. We also were lucky enough to be able to revisit some people we met before at East Antrim Boat Club and it's a lovely club, great people, everybody is very very friendly and we were really really pleased to be able to say hello to some people we've seen before. They've been very very good to us here and if you are up this way do take the opportunity to drop in say hello and get to know them it is worth the effort. From here we hope to depart in the morning and go south to Belfast Lock and if my mum's got over all the things that she needs to organise then we hope to see her but really what we need to do is get down the down coast, down the Ards Peninsula and into Strangford because there's a big weather system due in at the end of the week according to the forecast and we would very much like to be in Strangford and tucked away somewhere before it hits. But it's a weather forecast, it could be right, could be wrong, who knows, I don't, I'm sure they don't either. To be honest you'd probably be safer betting your money on horses but there you go. Big tidy up then. Yeah, um, I had hoped to be on anchor here um, a little bit longer, but um, Bev's mum can only see her one particular day. So um, we're organising ourselves to get to Carrick so we can do that. And then we'll be off again as soon as we've got sorted out a few other bits. But yeah, looking forward to it. Who's helming tomorrow then? I'm on the helm tomorrow. Um, we swap it about. Um, and what's the condition supposed to be? It should be saleable. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs>
So far, the journey from Larne had been very pleasant, but we were about to have a rude awakening. We were about to undergo one of the worst docking procedures we had had in years. As we approached Carrick, we contacted the marina and were directed onto the visitor pontoon as we expected. This suited us, because the wind would be blowing us off the pontoon, meaning that once the boat was mirrored up, it would not be pressed against the pontoon and we would have a pleasant time. Just inside the entrance and to leeward was a large fishing boat. The area in front of the other yacht is reserved for the sailing club, so we were going to moor behind it. We were unaware that there was a local event on, which involved a rowing boat and its safety boat. Also, each of the hammerheads to leeward of us had a boat moored on it. Because we needed the room to make a 180 turn, we went as close to the moored boats as we dared. Just as we were making our turn, the rowboat pushed off and we had to stop and reverse in order to avoid them, and we nearly hit the moored boat to leeward. With the rowboat to windward and the moored boats to leeward and the fishing boat behind us, we were running out of options, so a large dose of power and a second attempt to moor up was made. That was a bit of a to-do. No, that's not what I would have described it as. I would describe it as a complete fiasco, but there you go. <sighs> After Am I allowed to say rude things about people or do I have to be polite? You have to be polite. <sighs> you can be rude about me though. No, uh, you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't, for example, you didn't cast off in front of an incoming boat, then stop to have a conversation with somebody on the thing, and then give strange looks at the boat, then decide to row off. <laughs> um, you didn't ignore instructions like, can you please hold on a second just to be get out of your way? You know, uh, from other people. You know, and you didn't throw dirty looks like, like f***ing yacht anyway, what are you doing? <laughs> and the answer was, of course, we were drifting in the wind because we can't do damn all else when you got the engine half off. Oh, days. <sighs> and then we've got a giant fishing boat where I've never seen a giant fishing boat, but it doesn't really help getting into these berths. We went into another berth that we were told we could go into to find big reserved signs everywhere. So then we had to come backwards with the wind blowing us off the one we could get to. And <sighs> is it any wonder I am drenched in sweat. My clothes stink. I stink. I'm knackered. I'm not had enough coffee. I'm on a chocolate deficit. I've had enough. I'm going for a shower. Ah, oh, days. I was just saying to Bev that um, you know marinas are by far and away the most dangerous places because. Whereas when you're out at sea, um, obviously you need to keep an, uh, a watch out for various bits and bobs. But realistically, you've got plenty of time to react and uh, manoeuvre and do various things. 
Whereas once you come into a marina, uh, you've got a lot of boats around you, you've got people doing various things. Um, so we've been instructed to go on to the visitor berth. When I uh, looked at the depth, we've come in at high water. Um, the depth underneath the keel was actually physically uh, more than the depth I had on the depth gauge. Um, so, you know, I couldn't really stay there. Um, we might have got a little bit more depth by going forward a little bit, but um, wasn't sort of like uh, keen on that. Um, so Beverly put some more ropes out because we were told to go on to a pontoon just uh, behind the uh, hammerheads. So every single rope is behind, on behind us. Um, went to another berth just to find out that was reserved. Came back from that and then I, because of windage I wasn't in control sufficiently. I was blown onto another boat. So. Beverly pulled us in online so ah, like I say a bit of a to do and it just makes you realize that of all the places that you go in your boat marinas are by far and away the trickiest bits of maneuvering you have to deal with. Mm -hmm.